The 12th Admiral Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture will take place on Friday. It marks the first such event since uh, the Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu passing uh, at the end of 2021. For more on this, we are joined now by the Desmond and Leah Tutu Legacy Foundation CEO, Janet Jobson. Janet, good to have you with us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Talk to us about uh, the, the key focus of this lecture and um, uh, what, what are you hoping to, to, to be the, the ultimate outcome of it. Mm. Well, I, I'm glad you um, previewed that by mentioning that it's the first lecture since the passing of the arch, because what we're really trying to do is bring back some of his spirit and his wisdom um, through the lecture. The, the theme for this year is a vision for hope and healing in times of crisis. And I think as many of us know, whether it's in South Africa or around the world, things can feel really dark at the moment. And so we're trying to really ensure that we bring alive that extraordinary courage um, and the powerful vision that the Arch had. And we've got two extraordinary speakers that are going to um, headline the, the lecture that we hope will be able to do that. Yeah, we just spoke to Professor Tulima Denzela moments ago where she's highlighting this question of hunger, saying hunger mm. breeds anger is known is known to do that however yourself you are holding on to the idea that when 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 people are pursuing healing uh when people are pursuing you know th those things that are important it's important to 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 have hope why 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 do you want people to hold on to hope and and people are going to say what 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 is hope going to do for us when we are hungry <laughs> well hope is the fuel that that's gets us to the solutions to all of our problems. I think, um, you know, one of the things the Arch was very committed to was was the idea that um, hope hope lights us up. Hope gives us the energy to believe that something is possible despite all of the odds and therefore to make it possible. He was really clear. He, he used to say that, you know, despair is the enemy of action. Um, and so we really believe that we need to root ourselves no, not in hope that is sort of um, a cheesy greeting card, fluffy thing, but hope that is gritty and real and really connected and rooted in the issues of our time, but rooted in a very strong, courageous commitment to the idea that we can solve the problems, we can solve hunger in South Africa, we can solve the issues of unemployment that you were just speaking about. But if we come at it from a place of already having given up, already being in a space of despair or of cynicism, uh, then we won't find the innovations we need. Uh, and so hope is fundamentally a creative act and, and we're hoping to really well, we're hoping to really uh, bring that to our audience, both in person at the City Hall and then online all around the world. Two fantastic speaker. One, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. The other, best-selling uh, author. Tell us a little bit more about that selection and, and why you chose those particular voices at this time. Yeah, I mean, the Deputy Secretary General of the UN, Amina Mohammed, is one of the most extraordinary um, African leaders uh, that our continent has, has generated. She worked tirelessly in education and health in Nigeria and then went on to become the, the Minister of, of, of the Environment in Nigeria and really drove a powerful climate change agenda. And that really then set her up to become the architect of what what we've all bought into now is the Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals really are a project rooted in hope. They're setting an agenda for all countries around the world to put at the center of how we think about development, the idea of human flourishing and, and of planetary sustainability. So we're really excited uh, that she'll be in the country and she'll be addressing us in person. And then we did want to ensure that the arch was really brought alive and remembered as this is the first um, lecture since his passing. And so Doug Abrams is the author who co-wrote the Book of Joy with the arch and the Dalai Lama. And he collaborated on many other projects with the arch over sort of 20 years of collaboration. So we thought if we could bring together um, someone who knew the arch well and, and who's, who's sort of used his talent as a writer to give the world hope and joy with a profoundly powerful global leader who is really showing us the way across the world around putting human flourishing at the center of all of our development, uh, that we'll have a fantastic evening and a, a fantastic conversation between the two speakers. It's not a once-off thing, this idea of uh, uh, developing a flourishing society, but how, how do you think we can, in, 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 in line, of course, with the 
the broad ideas of, of, of the arch reignite that, that sense of an agenda of wanting to, 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 to develop flourishing societies? Yeah, I mean, our agenda as the Tutu Legacy Foundation is that we are seeking to grow society's courage to heal. And um, we think that there's such a powerful and important role for all members of society to take on in um, not just developing solutions to our challenges, but really being um, voices of moral courage in a, in a society that is so unequal and in a globe that has so many challenges. Um, and so what, what that agenda of change needs to be rooted in is fundamentally um, an understanding of Ubuntu, of our, our fundamental um, humanness and humanity being bound up with each other and and as the arch later wrote um also that our humanity is bound up with the planet the ecosystems of the planet um that agenda needs to be put forward powerfully by people of moral courage people who are willing to take the right side of every issue i think one of the great blessings we had in the arch was that he he on every issue um was on the right side of the issue he he yeah. You know, almost had a sort of way of thinking. Does this does this affirm or undermine the value and dignity of all human beings? And and if it was clear that it undermined it, he would stand up against it. Whether it was within his own church, whether it was against um, government for for corruption, um, whether it was on any issue, he was right. willing to stand up to anyone uh, who 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 undertook a position that was unjust um, or who supported injustice. And I think we've lost some of the moral courage in our society, the, the willingness just to speak truth to power. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what we're trying to embody in, in our work as his legacy foundation, but also what we're trying to inspire with our various programs and platforms such as the Peace Lecture. Janet, appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on. Uh, that is the CEO of the Desmond and Leia Tutu Legacy Foundation, uh, Janet Jobson. It's uh, at the Cape Town City Hall on the 7th of October, studying at 7 up until 10, and uh, tickets already available uh, online. You can also stream it, I believe, the lecture at tutu.org.za. Much appreciated, and thanks for your time and uh, for coming on tonight. Now.